here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, y'all, and we're about to get started on our Sunday night live stream show. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are getting started here. It is 8.28 p.m. on Sunday night, May 10th. This is another episode of the Hubbard's Marina live Q&A fishing show. We do these shows every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. So hopefully you guys are ready for another great episode of our show. We are going to be starting here shortly. Just need a few minutes to get set up. If you're watching the show live, stay tuned, guys. We'll be with you shortly. If you're not watching live, you can skip forward to where you see the video start. Uh, sh should be in about four minutes or so. Uh, if you are watching live and it's Sunday night, May 10th at 8.29 p.m., make sure you comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up for us. We'd really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give the video a like. And uh, on Facebook, I mean, give that video a like. And then if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook, like and share for us. We'd appreciate it. We are going to get started here shortly. Got a great show lined up for you tonight, guys. Got some good news, some great news. Got tons of good fishing photos to share with y'all. Plus, we got some video to show you uh, from our recent trip. So, lots of interesting stuff tonight. And as always, we're going to answer your questions live during the show. That phone number in the upper right-hand corner 727-393-1947. If you have a question, make sure you text it to that number in the upper right-hand corner. That's how you get your questions answered live on the show. If you don't text the number, we won't get your questions. Also, when we're giving away the free trips later on during the show, make sure if you're picked as that lucky winner, make sure you text that phone number. So wait till we do the drawings. If your name happens to be the lucky winner, you text that number in the upper right hand corner immediately to claim your free trip. You do have to watch live in order to be eligible to win. So you have to claim that free trip quickly to prove you are watching live. And you do have to comment at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video in order to be eligible to win. So that's how it works, folks. Hopefully everybody's ready for a great show tonight. We're going to get started here very shortly. I appreciate your patience, as always. Just need a few minutes to get set up here. And uh, once we're set up, we will get rocking. Make sure if you're watching on Facebook that you share this video to your favorite fishing club or fishing group or to your timeline or start a watch party. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and tell your friends to tune in to the show. Uh, we are going to be spending an hour going over inshore, nearshore, and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. Mostly focused on nearshore and offshore fishing tips and tricks. And we're going to be answering your questions live during the show. But we're only answering those questions that are texted to that number in the upper right-hand corner. We are blessed to get a lot of comments. And uh, your comments often will not get read live during the show. So in order to get something read live during the show, you do have to, again, text that number in the upper right-hand corner. Don't forget to comment at least one time to enter yourself in those free drawings as well. Ah, I think I covered just about everything. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, but I'm sure you guys are willing to help me if, uh, if I do forget anything. So I know you got my back. We got each other's back, right? Uh, we are just about ready to get started. We do have some good announcements to make tonight as well. So lots of good stuff going on. So far, it looks like we got, uh, let's see here, about 280 on Facebook and about 55 on YouTube. So that's about 320 live viewers. That's pretty good for not even starting the show yet. 
Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and I couldn't be more happy to be getting to my barber shop tomorrow and getting a haircut and getting this mess cleaned up. So that is a, a good thing <laughs> for sure. I'm over uh, my barber shop being closed. So take a good look. This is the last time you're going to see this quarantine mess, and I couldn't be more happy. <laughs> But uh, happy Sunday night, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Hubbard's Marina is in central west Florida in Johns Pass. We've been fishing local waters since 1928. Started out with seven rowboats and 14 cane poles. And my grandfather, my father helped build out the business. Nowadays, we do a little bit of everything from two inches of water out past the Florida Middle Grounds, Elbow, and surrounding areas. Anything that swims out in the Gulf or in our, in our coastal, we have a trip to go catch them. And we do much more than just fishing, too. But that's what we're here tonight to talk about. So we're going to be focused on fishing tonight. But we keep in mind, we also do more than just fishing, if you can believe that. <laughs> All right, so let's see uh, what we are going to do is get started with our photos. We finally have some good photos to show you. Uh, well, we always had good photos to show you, but these are our good photos from our fishing trip. So really, really excited to get into the photos tonight. But first, we're going to start inshore and show you what they've been catching around the docks and around Tampa Bay uh, inshore. So let's start there. Here is a nice big old black drum. Uh, this is Alex and Christine and uh, or Christine and uh, uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but a nice big old black drum for sure. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Got a nice trout and flounder. Another nice flounder. The mackerel bite's been good. Redfish are around. Redfish have been a little tricky. Uh, Upper Tampa Bay has definitely been better for redfish, but they've been pretty steady throughout the area if you're lucky enough to find them. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of snook. The snook have been really loaded up around John's Pass. They're starting to move into the passes, especially the bigger snook. And during the day, staging up on the beaches, the smaller snook are really active in the back bay waters. And uh, at night, there's a ton of snook in the pass. These triple tail, this is a triple tail here, really good eating fish. These triple tail have been stacked up around the mouth of Tampa Bay, along the beaches, those crab trap buoys. Uh, floating debris markers all holding plenty of triple tail lots of mackerel or uh, excuse me lots of trout lately around our bridges docks and edges of the grass flats and potholes especially at night around the bridge lights and dock lights we've been seeing a lot of trout so that's a quick rundown of what's biting inshore right now and we're going to move it near shore now and show you what's been happening near shore so kingfish are still around luckily uh we uh, had or we chose uh it was our decision to close back march 23rd and luckily uh the kingfish are still around now that we've reopened the big worry was hey we closed march 23rd we might not be able to open until may are the kingfish going to pass us while we're closed? Luckily, we've proven that wrong. Uh, near shore, we've been seeing a lot of these uh, 26 to 32 inch kingfish. Nothing real big, but we've been seeing a lot of these nice kings. We've been seeing a good red grouper bite anywhere from around 70 to 80 foot uh, starting out all the way up to about 100 foot near shore. Near shore by definition, when I say near shore, I mean from the beach out to about 20 miles or from 10 to 15 foot of water off the beach all the way out to about 100 foot. So the near shore red grouper bite is best in that deepest near shore water from about 70 to 100 foot of water. Uh, and we'll get offshore here in a second, talk more about the offshore bite past 100 foot of water. There's another nice kingfish from the hub. The hub's been doing really well catching some kings. But check out this smoker kingfish from the 10 hour all day today. Big old bruiser king uh, on the 10 hour party boat trip today, Sunday. Really nice catch here by this happy angler. And then this cobia, this was a monster cobia. This was sent into me. 
uh, for our Friday uh, Fox 13 Good Catch segment. If you have if you've missed that, uh, basically every Friday morning, Fox 13 and uh, Russell Rhodes has me on the show to talk about fishing uh, for a few minutes and we talk about what's biting inshore, nearshore, and offshore. Uh, often I have plenty of photos nearshore and offshore, uh, but I don't have those inshore photos. So if you ever catch inshore species around our area, please feel free to submit those photos to that phone number in the upper right hand corner. That's 727-393-1947 number. You can text us at that number and send us photos of your catch. So this was one photo that was submitted by a local angler. This was caught off a Crystal River area in pretty shallow water. Uh, it was a monster cobia. Definitely a beautiful fish. A lot of cobia have been showing up in our nearshore waters lately. So excited about that for sure. We've been seeing a lot of cobia show. Well, not a lot of cobia. We've been seeing quite a few cobia show up. We've been seeing a lot of kingfish, a lot of mackerel, a real good uh, uh, red grouper bite, and some nice mangrove snapper, and then plenty of the uh, other species as well. The hogfish bite near shore has been a little soft this week, uh, but we're shaking the dust off everything, and I'm sure we'll get back on those hogfish hopefully here this coming week if the weather allows. The weather is a little bit a little bit hit and missed. We'll go over that here shortly after we get through the photos. But next, we've talked about, we've shown you the inshore catch. We've shown you the near shore catch. Now let's take it offshore. So here are our 39-hour picks. We had a 39-hour trip Tuesday, and we had a 44-hour trip Friday. So we've had two long-range trips this week. So we've got a lot of these offshore photos to show you. Offshore, still some nice uh, kingfish action going on. Been seeing some nice kingfish on the troll. We got a nice yellow fin or a yellow tail, excuse me, yellow tail snapper bite on the Tuesday 39 hour trip. Some big mangrove snapper for sure. Some big yellow tails. Lots of mangroves. Some big mangroves too. Some nice red grouper action. A few lane snapper. The amberjack were a little tough on uh, the Tuesday trip uh, because of current. We had a really tough current that was running really hard, so it made catching amberjack and dialing in on those fish in deep water a little bit more challenging. On the weekend 44 hour, we were able to get on the amberjack a little bit better. Not so much of a current issue, still some current around, um, but on the 44 hour, the big problem was those jacks kind of spread out a little bit. So we were fighting through a lot of those uh, just barely undersized jacks to get a few keepers. But luckily, it made up for it on the bottom of other species. But we have been catching some keeper jacks. Here's a nice big African pompano, trying to get a better photo of that fish. Apparently is floating around having trouble locating it, but there's a shot of that African pompano on the deck. This was the 44-hour catch. Some monster kingfish you can see there. All those caught trolling. Some nice big amberjack and a massive pile of mangrove snapper. Right now, we're running super limited capacities, so we don't have a lot of fishermen on the boat. So that pile wasn't huge. Uh, it would have been huge if we had more anglers on board. The fishing has been really good offshore. We've been blessed to get right back after it and have some good success. We've been seeing some of these blackfin tuna at night. And look at this monster. This is a Kubera snapper. A Kubera snapper is one of those unique, really big meat-eating snapper species. We uh, run into them in the late spring and through the summer and even into August, September uh, in deeper water areas. So real excited to see this Kubera. This came off the midweek 39-hour trip while we were targeting those amber jacks. So Really cool fish. This weighed in right at 50 pounds. I think it was 50 pounds point something on the digital scale when they were weighing it in for the uh, jackpot. But this is Ray Summer Hour, the gentleman who caught it, and his buddy Muhammad who came fishing with him. And uh, you can tell Muhammad is standing in the background just astonished at Ray's big trophy catch. These Kubera, uh, we catch them from time to time, uh, but they are definitely a trophy catch. So fish of a lifetime right there. And here is a nice big old mangrove snapper. That is a monster mangrove. Sylvester Barone showing off a monster mangrove. Here's one of those red groupers that were caught 
Nice scamp grouper. I love those scamp. Those are one of my favorite eating groupers. And this is one of my favorite eating snapper, those yellowtail snapper. That's a monster. But this was the big yellowtail snapper, almost six pounds, a giant flag yellowtail. So some good yellowtail action, some nice mangroves, some nice fat red grouper, and then some oddballs thrown in the mix. This was a 44-hour full moon uh, catch, this huge redfish. Uh, was a little lost. Uh, those redfish go offshore this time of year to spawn. This guy was caught and released. You cannot keep them no matter their size or if, if, right now, redfish are completely closed, but even if they were open and even if it's legal size when caught in federal waters, you cannot keep those redfish. So it was caught and released quickly, but nice fish nonetheless. This is a really blurry photo of a monster kingfish caught trolling. Wish we had a little bit better photo, but still wanted to show you how big that kingfish was. One of the red groupers that were caught, another nice red grouper, amberjack. Here's the big amberjack, nice fish for sure. Nice catch and release gag grouper. Those gag grouper are gonna open up in June. They open June 1st and they're open the rest of the year through the end of December. The best time to catch those gags is October, November, December. My favorite time is around mid-November to the end of December. There's another nice big old kingfish caught in the troll. Definitely some really good 39 and 44 hour fishing as you can see. But we always like to show you the uh, catch piles, and uh, if you miss those, I want to show you those videos here real quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, because hopefully you watch our Facebook and YouTube channels through the week as well. Uh, so maybe you might have seen these catches already, but I just want to play it for real quick for those of you who might have missed it. And again, we're not going to spend a lot of time Good on morning, it. guys. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Captain Brian, Will, and the guys just came back in from a 39 hour with a huge pile of fish. Remember, we are super limiting capacity, so this is for 28 anglers. Nice light load and lots of big fish. Looks like they got a nice Cabrera. Will, you want to hold that thing up? Nice Cabrera snapper. Definitely something to write home about here. Look at that sucker. Yes, sir. That is a beautiful fish. Wow. Nice fish. Richie, you want to grab that African? Nice African pompano. Come on, hold them up together, Will. You got it. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to wait a minute. <laughs> He's a professional. Nice. Nice African pompano and big Cabrera. That's awesome, man. Some nice fish for sure. Some amberjack in there. Amberjack were a little tough, but we got some nice ones. Nice big old black fin tuna there. Nice. Keep in mind, guys, this was from the Tuesday 39 hour. Should have introed that a little better. So this was the Tuesday 39 hour catch. We'll show you the 44 hour catch real shortly after this. Nice big black fin tuna. Looks like a great trip. Some big mangroves. There's one big mangrove over here I want to show you real quick. Look at the size of that mangrove. Got to be a solid eight pounder. What's going on, Will? How was the trip? We had a uh, really good bite at night out there. And uh, most of the heads and tails fish we caught at night. And then uh, we went down to where we were hoping to catch the jacks. And the current was incredibly smoking. But we did get the African, the Cabrera, and the big jack out in the current. The big nice. fish bit in the current, but uh, it was just very hard to fish. So we had to leave that area and uh, go do some grouper fishing. Did decent on the red grouper after that and uh, finished up on a decent mangrove spot at the end of the night. Cool, so we got some big mangroves, some nice red grouper. Yeah, there's big some mangroves. big yellowtails in here too, man. Yeah, there's a huge yellowtail. There's almost a 30 inch yellowtail in there probably. We had a, a couple close to that size as well, but there's one big, big one in there. That's, maybe seven pounds. That's crazy, a seven pound yellowtail, that's monstrous. All right, man, I'll let you guys get back to it. Nice catch, Captain Brian. Some big nice kingfish in there. Woo. Definitely a nice All right, catch. Right. All right, so that was the 39 hour midweek trip uh, and their catch. Here's the 44 hour full moon catch. Good morning, guys. Morning. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with a nice big 39 hour catch. Captain Brian. 
It was a 44 hour catch. I said it wrong this morning. My bad. <laughs> got these guys and gals on some nice big old fish. We got Will and Jason uh, here to talk about that catch. And there's some of the big fish. Look at those big old kingfish. And a nice big old amberjack. Nice catch, Captain Brian. Wow, that is a monster king. Some big old jacks, lots of big mangroves. Looks like a good trip, huh, Will? Yeah, it was a good trip, a steady pick. As you guys see this, it's mostly mangroves and vermilions, more mangroves than we've caught in at least 60 days. Mention the current. Yeah. And uh, we had a, a, a little bit of current this trip. It wasn't as bad as when we went, we went about 20 feet shallower this trip than we did last trip. And uh, the current wasn't as bad, but we still had to deal with a little current out there. We came home with a great catch of mangroves and vermilions. And there's big kingfish out there. We caught those kingfish on the troller, all of them. Big kingfish, wow. And we lost others too. Big, there's big fish on the troller out there right now. Cool, the trolling was good, mangrove bite was good. And the bite, it, it never really went crazy, but we caught fish on every spot. A few on every spot, a few on every spot, even in the daytime. And, Very cool. Uh, we had a pretty good red grouper spot in the daytime. Caught like six or seven red groupers. Oh, on look at that strawberry. That's the best eating fish on the boat right there. Nice, back. How about the yellowtail? You guys got a lot of yellowtails on that 39 hour. It doesn't look like you got many in this pile. No, there, there are a few in there, but this is more the middle grounds mangrove pile right here. I got and, you. Uh, some, some big mangroves in here too. They're kind of buried, but I'd say we got Chris in the corner there. He caught probably a seven and an eight pounder. Wow. He put uh, John Martin and Danny and Shane back oh, here. There is a yellowtail in there. I see a couple yellowtails. But all in all, good trip. Real good pile of fish here. High quality. There, oh, that's a big mango. Very cool. All right, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So there was the 39-hour catch and the 44-hour catch followed and the 39 hour catch first, 44 hour catch second. Definitely some good fishing this past week here at Hubbard's Marina. We had a little bit of a tough bite on our 12 hour night snapper trip. We were hoping for some better action, but unfortunately, uh, those mangroves didn't quite cooperate for us Friday night on that, uh, that 12 hour night snapper. Uh, that I think it had a lot to do with the cold front that we had Thursday. Uh, I was hoping it was kind of a weak front, so I was hoping that the fish would be wet, ready to cooperate for us by Friday night. They cooperated so well Tuesday for us, and they cooperated so well for us uh, on that 44 hour over the weekend. So I was hopeful that the 12 hour night snapper would do as well, um, but it definitely was a little bit tough on the 12 hour night snapper trip this week. But next week we're gonna go after them again and try it uh, and hopefully have a little bit better success. So we're looking forward to getting back out there on another 12 hour night snapper here this coming Friday. Uh, we do have some announcements to do here real quick, and then we're going to get into your questions. We have some questions mounting up. Remember, if you have questions, to text that number right here, guys. That's 727-393-1947. That is how you get your questions answered. If you pop your question into the comments, it goes up and up and up and disappears from my view. So I can't answer your questions if you pop them into the comments. The only way I can answer your questions live is if you text that number. All right, guys? But here, real quick, the announcements I wanted to get to. We just added just added a brand new 39 hour trip for this month. That's Friday, May 29th. Just popped it into the system just before we started this live show. Reason why is we have two more 39 hours left in May and both of them are sold out because we're limiting capacity and we're only taking up to 30 people, which is 25% of our COI uh, number. Uh, because we're only taking 30 people, both of our remaining May 39 hour trips are sold out. So we added a May 29th Friday 39 hour trip. It's completely open. You can book whatever spots you want right now on our website and uh, tomorrow I'll be pushing that out and making it public but if you're watching the show tonight you got first crack at booking some of those spots keep in mind 
Efficient spots are not guaranteed right now. We do have some uh, unique policies and procedures uh, because of the virus, but you can go onto our website, click info, and then under the info tab is that COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. Make sure if you're coming out to see us that you click on this page and you can read all the virus policy and procedures that we're doing. The most important thing to keep in mind is there's no spot better than any other on the boat. Uh, excuse me. And fishing spots are not guaranteed. We need to spread out guests. We need to guarantee as best we can uh, the social distancing will be adhered to. So the way we do that is prior to one of these 39-hour trips or 12-hour trips or 10-hour trips, I actually physically print out a copy of the boat and the spots and I move groups to where groups that come together can fish together, but that we leave some space uh, in between that group and the next group. So we will have to physically move people around if we need to. Um, but if you're booking, you can always uh, move uh, and stay away from other people. And that definitely will keep you safe. Um, but very excited to announce we've added a new 39-hour trip Friday, May 29th, if you want to take advantage of it. Also, during our uh, closure, during that quarantine closure, a lot of you guys know we added that new Salinity Gear Performance shirt, that uh, Dorado, that Mahi shirt. If you missed it, we'll show you here real quick. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, they already changed up their shop. Uh, I don't know if I can find it, but long story short, it was a really, really cool Salinity Gear shirt uh, that was uh, added. Uh, and it's a black shirt with a green Mahi Mahi rub on it. It's really, really cool. And uh, it's a performance shirt in the long sleeve. A lot of people, while we were closed, wanted to get the shirt, but they wanted it in short sleeve. We now have the short sleeve version in our shop at Hubbard's Marina. So stop by. We got some new gear if you want to check it out. And then also our uh, new D hookers. The D hookers that I've been talking about, those Barracuda Tackle D hookers, we finally got them manufactured. We have them in our shop. So if you want to stop by the shop, if you got a trip booked, you can pick up those new D hookers. Uh, Amberjack are open this entire month of May. So that new. Newly added May 29th, 39 hour trip is the last chance to catch and land and keep an amberjack until August. So, August, September, and er, yeah, August, September, and October are the last three months of amberjack for the year. Uh, but they are open the entire month of May. So Amberjack are open now and will remain open through the month of May. So if you want to join us for some Amberjack fishing, that 39 hour we just added May 29th is a great option. And then Red Snapper season starts June 1st. So we're excited about that for sure. Looking forward to Red Snapper season picking up uh, in the month of June. Red Snapper season opens June 1st and it ends end of day august 1st so august 2nd at 12:01 a.m red snappers close so the only time to catch red snapper and keep them is june 1st through end of day august 1st so those spots are filling up fast the best way to get a red snapper is on our 39 hour trip our 44 hour trip or our 12 hour extreme trip or booking your own long range private charter on the flying hub 2 those are the ways to catch and keep a red snapper during that short red snapper season uh, real quick we're going to give away a free five hour half day for two so we're going to do our first free fishing trip giveaway now and then we're going to get into your questions guys so let's see who won a five hour half day for two guests remember if you're picked as a lucky winner you do have to text that number in the upper right hand corner and claim your free trip quickly so paula gurney uh, also, this is a nice reminder. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there who's watching the show. Hopefully some of you guys uh, joined us tonight, uh, even though it is Mother's Day. But hopefully, Paula, you are a mother because that would be even better that we 
uh, randomly selected a mother to win on Mother's Day night. <laughs> but uh, we still got a 10-hour trip to give away. We got a 39-hour trip for one guest to give away. Normally, we wait till we have at least 400 live viewers. But right now, between Facebook and YouTube, we're already at 180 it looks like, if my math is correct. Yeah, 480. I apologize. So we're already well above where we need to be to give away a free 39-hour trip. So we just gave away a half day for two guests to Paula Gurney. Now we're going to give away a 10-hour all-day trip for two guests a little bit later, and then a 39-hour trip for one person later before the show ends. So stay tuned. Make sure you comment where you're watching from or drop at least one comment into our Hubbard's Marina Facebook. You got to go to Facebook. You got to go to the Hubbard's Marina page. Find the live video. Comment once you're entered to win those free trips. But with that, let's get into these questions. We got a lot of questions building up here, so let's get into them. The first question is, uh, on what part of the water column do you fish for amberjack on the 39-hour fishing trip? Uh, I like fishing for amberjack uh, with live bait, and my trick to amberjack fishing is I get a really big reel, a really big rod, and a really big hook and heavy leader, like a 100 pound or even 120 pound on like a big 9-aught reel, something with at least 40 pounds of drag, but 50 pounds of drag is better, low gear ratio, high power, and I get a really, really big live bait, and uh, I drop that bait down until it disappears so I'm watching the bait go down over the side of the boat once I can't see that bait anymore I put the brake on with my thumb pressing that spool with my thumb and I stop the bait from descending to bottom and then I just barely let out a little bit of slack at a time slowly dropping that big live bait to the bottom and a lot of times before you even get close to the bottom your bait will start getting nervous and dancing around that's when I set the drag and wait because a lot of times once he starts getting nervous it's because a big amberjack is looking at him and all of a sudden it'll get hit and start taking off and the fight is on. So most of the time uh, the amberjack are up in the water column. Now a specific depth or ratio where they're at, it's never the same. So amberjack can be right on the bottom, can be 60 feet off the bottom, they can be right under the boat sometimes. So you just, what I like to do is drop that bait out of view. Once it disappears out of view, that's when I start slowly dropping it to bottom. And as soon as it starts dancing around, getting frisky, I stop. I wait a minute or two. If it doesn't get hit, I drop it down another 10, 15 feet, lock it off again and wait. And that's what I do until I hit bottom. Then once I hit bottom, I leave it on the bottom and uh, let it sit on the bottom for five, 10 minutes. If I don't get hit, reel it up slowly because sometimes you'll get hit on the way to the surface. Reel it up slowly, switch out another bait and send it back down and try it again. Uh, the other part of that question was, does amber do amberjack bite at night? Generally, greater amberjack don't bite at night too well. We mostly target amberjack during the day. Good question, though. Uh, what baits and lures work for Spanish mackerel? The best live bait for Spanish mackerel would be a greenback or white bait or shad or goggle eyes, something white like a greenback or threadfin herring. And the best lures that I like casting for Spanish mackerel would be a gotcha plug, like a 7 8, seven eighths ounce gotcha plug is a great option. Something you can cast really far and retrieve really quickly. Uh, for trolling for Spanish mackerel, I just like a trolling spoon. It works really, really well. Let's see, what other questions do we have? What is the difference between the Daiwa Saltis LD50 and the LD40? So the Daiwa Saltist and the Daiwa Saltiga LD reels, they're lever drag two-speed reels. My favorite is the Saltiga. It's a little bit more pricey, but it's a solid frame, all one-piece reel. The spool is independent, free-floating, 
super smooth. The Saltiga has a considerable amount more drag capacity too. So it's a stronger reel with more power. Uh, the Saltist is a little step down from the Saltiga. Uh, at our shop, it's about $140 cheaper. The Saltist LD50 is $369. The Saltiga is $499. You do get 10% off those prices if you have a trip booked with us. Uh, and we have tons of the LD50s. We only carry the LD50 because the only difference between the LD50 and the LD40 is a smaller spool. So uh, I don't like the LD40 because... I can get a little bigger reel with more line capacity, more line on the spool, and uh, it's the same reel. So it would make more sense to me to have more line on my spool. So I prefer the LD50 for the re that reason. And if I'm correct in remembering and recalling, the LD50 and the LD40 Saltis, the only difference is the size of the spool. Let's see, next question is, can you have full boat loads in June on your fishing trips? Right now, we're limiting capacity um, because we have to secure that social distancing. It's super important. Plus, we're trying to be careful for our captains, crew, staff, and our Hubbard's Marina family. Now, once we move into phase two, those capacities are going to loosen a little bit. We're going to carry more people. Once we move into phase three, those capacities are going to completely probably go away. So to answer the question on can we carry full boats in June, I don't know. I don't know what the feds are going to do. I don't know what the state's going to do. I don't know what the county's going to do. I would like to. A lot of these trips in June, especially our 39-hour trips, have been sold out for months. So it would break my heart to let someone down and say, hey, you can't go because we have to limit capacity. So that that's the last thing I want to do. I hate to cancel trips. It's the worst thing in the world. And this would be even worse because I'm not canceling the trip. I'm just telling some people who booked last that they can't go. And so hopefully it won't come to that. Uh, but to answer anybody's questions, all those new policies that we created, all those new virus policies under hubbardsmarina.com, go to info, go to COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. All these policies and procedures that are listed on this page, including the capacities that we're limiting the boat to, which I think I scrolled past. Here's the capacity changes on the vessel. So these capacity changes on the vessels right here, guys. It's only May 1st to May 30th. We have we reserve the right to change these policies at any time. Um, and we're going to do that basically mainly for the safety of our passengers and, and crew. So the capacities won't increase until something changes. And what would be changed is the phases. So we're kind of waiting to see. So to answer the question, I don't know what June's going to bring. I don't know what the next couple weeks is going to bring. But I'm hoping that positive things keep happening. Stuff starts getting back to normal. And we can carry uh, those people who have been booked out fishing in June. Uh, if it comes to worst case scenario and we have to limit capacities in June, uh, we will go by who booked first. So if, let's say we only can take 40 people instead of 50. The first 40 people that made the reservation on that trip, those are who get to go. So we will do our best to keep it fair in that regard. Let's see, checking in from Indian Rocks Beach, is the coronavirus mess changing fishing limits or what you see people catching? No, the coronavirus has had absolutely zero effect on fishery regulations and our fishery other than it's made us very excited to get back out fishing and very happy to be back out in the water. That's the only change. Uh, and then obviously our business practices have severely been impacted uh, and changed because we're completely changing the way we do business. Um, but those are the main impacts that we've seen. And being closed for 40 some days was not cool. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, the next question is, are any cool trips coming up uh, that are unique light load trips? Well, almost all of our trips are unique light load trips. Right now, we're limiting capacity to, again, only 25% of what our party boats can carry. So there's tons of room on these trips. Uh, a half-day trip, we can take up to 65. We're only taking 30. A 10-hour trip, we can take up to 60. We only take 30. On a 39-hour trip, we normally take up to 50. 
we're only taking 30. The boats can hold up to 120. There's 78 rod holders. So all our trips are limited capacity, unique loads right now, which makes it a great time for you guys. So take advantage of it while you can uh, for the month of May. Uh, because again, hopefully in June, things will be a little bit back to normal. Uh, another great question we have here is what is the regulars club membership? So our regulars club, for those of you who don't know what it is, our regulars club is a loyalty program. How it works is uh, if you go fishing a lot, if you're fishing 10, 15, or 20 times a year or more, it would make sense for you to shoot me an email to info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com and ask me about sending you the regulars club information um, because the loyalty program makes it more affordable for you to go fishing more often. It's not a discount program. It's a loyalty program in the sense that if you're already fishing 10, 15, or 20 times a year, it makes it more affordable for you to fish a few more times for the same amount of money. Uh, you pay a little bit of money to join the club. You get big discounts on the trips, but only if you're committing to fishing those 10, 15, or 20 times a year. Um, the clubs start in uh, around the end of the year. So around November, we start doing signups for the following year. You can still sign up for the club today, but if you sign up today, your membership does expire December 31st of 2020. So it doesn't matter if you signed up in December 19 or January 20 or February, March, April, May 20, your membership still expires December 31st of 2020. Uh, and around November, end of November, early December 2020, we'll do signups for Regulars Club 2021. Uh, but shoot me an email if you want some more information. We have three different Regulars Club levels and memberships to choose from, and I can email you all that information. Next question is, how do you rig a pinfish for the 10-hour fishing trips? There's really two main ways to rig a pinfish. The first way is right up underneath the jaw and out the top of the face right next to the no nasal passage. Uh, that is primarily the way you would hook a pinfish, up underneath the jaw, out the top of the face. Uh, that's primarily how you would hook them when you're bottom fishing, uh, when you're drift fishing, when you're anchor fishing, when the bite is hot, up underneath the nose, out the top of the face. If the bite's a little bit slow, it's a little picky. Uh, if I'm uh, anchor fishing and the current's not running, the boat's not swinging, uh, I might tail hook that pinfish. Or if I'm flatline fishing for tuna or cobia, I'll tail hook that pinfish. And that just means sticking the hook through the side of the fish just above the anal fin, uh, just about maybe a quarter inch up from the bottom of that fish, right in the middle of the anal fin. And the tail hooking works great, but when you drop that bait to bottom, it spins and it will tangle you up. So you have to drop it down to bottom slower. So you have to put more pressure on the reel with your thumb to tail hook the bait. So it gets to the bottom more slowly, but once it gets to the bottom, it looks really natural on the bottom. So if the bite's hot, up underneath the nose, out the top of the face, or if I'm just get to a fishing spot, I want to be the first live big frisky bait to the bottom, up underneath the nose, out the top of the face. But if we've been fishing a spot a while, the bite's a little picky, I'll tail hook it and drop it down a little slower, see if that helps with a little better natural presentation. Good question though. Uh, so what is a good rod, reel, line, and hook setup for a chance to get a king or mahi-mahi that comes by? Well, a kingfish and a mahi-mahi are completely different, uh, and the setups would be pretty drastically different. Um, but essentially what you're getting after is a uh, flatlining rod and reel combo or a pitch rod and reel combo. So a lot of times when we go out there fishing, bottom fishing, it's a good idea to bring a flatline rod or a pitch rod, especially in the spring, summer, and early fall when we have a lot of plagics around, pretty much any time actually. But kingfish, especially in the spring and fall, a flatline works well to get yourself a shot at those fish. Uh, kingfish, uh, a stinger rig is mandatory. Uh, and those kingfish rigs, we have a great video on our website. If you go to hubbardsmarina.com, 
on our front page of our website you can go to fishing trips scroll down to where you see fishing tips and tricks and on the fishing tips and tricks page Smokey has a great video where he goes over how to make a kingfish rig uh, and I'm not gonna play the video because I played it a few times on our live show but after the show's over you can watch this how to tie a kingfish stinger rig uh, right from our website again just go to hubbardsmarina.com click fishing trips scroll down to fishing tips Tips and tricks and you can watch that video uh, yourself after the show it's really cool it's easy to tie that rig for mahi mahi generally just a small hook like a three-aught hook uh, and a small chunk of thread fin works really well cast it out when you see those fish swim by and no weight at all just small hook buried in a piece of thread fin or a live shrimp uh, or if you got lures like one of those yellow bucktails or a spro jig uh, those all work well for those mahi mahi up in the water column uh, next question is, what is the Hubbard's Marina truck doing up around Inverness? <laughs> uh, well, there's three Hubbard's Marina trucks. I drive one myself. Uh, my truck is an F-250, and I pretty much just go from my house in Seminole to the work at the marina and uh, nowhere in between, pretty much, uh, especially nowadays with the newborn. Um, my dad, he lives on a boat when he's here in town, and when he's not here in town, which is most of the time nowadays, he has property up in Floral City, uh, so that's around Inverness, I think. So you probably saw my father and his F-150 driving around. And then my brother-in-law and sister, uh, they drive around in another Hubbard's Marina F-150 as well. So it's like a shell game. You don't know who you're gonna see out driving around. Uh, let's see, next question. What's the max number of anglers currently going out on our 39 hour fishing trips? We talked about that early earlier it's only 30 people on all our party boat trips and again that virus page go to hubbardsmarina.com click info click covid19 operating policies and procedures all the information including the current capacities are listed on that page and do check it often because like i said we can update it at any time we have been adding to it haven't really been subtracting from it much un uh, unfortunately mostly just been adding more detail to it over time do you do a shark fishing trip and if so what days and how much we do do some shark fishing trips we do them friday nights based on the moon phase so it's not every friday it's most fridays from 7 p.m to midnight and uh, those trips are 150 dollars per person we only take up to nine people out on our small private charter boat the hub we set out like three or four rods we bait them up with big bait we assign one rod to each group set all the rods out if your group's rod goes off, you and your group fight that fish. If it's a big fish, it's taken a while. We might switch it out between different groups. Once you reel that fish in, everybody resets. The next group uh, gets a chance to fight a fish. And then hopefully by the end of the night, every group has had a chance to reel on a big fish. Uh, shark or Goliath grouper. Uh, it's a great trip. Uh, the shark fishing is not something that we get a lot of meat to take home because we practice catch and release of those sharks. Most of the sharks that we uh, come into contact with are protected and not able to be killed. And even if they're able to be killed, generally we don't just because they're a very tricky fish uh, to handle on the boat with customers on board. And they also are very tricky to prepare and actually cook up easily when you can go out and catch snapper grouper kingfish pelagics and all these other great eaten fish that we catch it doesn't really make sense in my mind to kill one of those sharks and try to take it home especially when uh, they can be so tricky they urinate through their skin sharks urinate through their skin when you kill a shark and throw it on ice and bring it home even if you go immediately home take it off the ice it stinks it stinks incredibly bad. When you actually catch a shark and you plan to uh, take it home and eat it, you actually have to bring it on board the boat, kill it, 
cut the guts out of the fish, take the gills out of the fish, and uh, then pack the whole thing with ice and take it home. Then you flay it out. Then you got to soak the meat for like 48 hours in milk or Sprite. It's a whole to do. So you don't want to mess with killing a shark, in my opinion. Go out and catch some grouper, snapper, or pelagics, amberjack. Take those home and eat those and let the sharks go back because you don't, you don't want to mess with them, <laughs> at least in my opinion. There are some really good eating sharks, um, but there's so many that you run into that are not able to be kept. And if you kill them, you're in a huge world of hurt and you have to be a part-time biologist to identify what sharks you can catch and keep legally. So easy to just catch and release them. Reel them up, take a picture, release them. Let's see, have you ever had to cut a trip short due to weather? And if so, how do you compensate? I think in my tenure of owning and operating here at Hubbard's Marina, I can count on my two hands how many trips we've had to cut short due to weather. Nine out of ten times we would cancel a trip before going offshore um, because uh, we are very careful about the weather. We watch the weather closely, and if weather is questionable, we don't send trips out. Uh, now, that kind of varies based on the trip. Like a five-hour half day is primarily a beginning angler's trip, uh, and we have to be more careful because beginning anglers, a three-foot sea is a lot compared to, say, a 39-hour trip filled with a bunch of experienced anglers. They might want to go fishing and can handle fishing no problem in six to eight foot seas. So it depends on the trip. Like, for example, the 12 hour extreme is on a smaller go fast boat. So three foot seas on a go fast boat going 40 miles an hour starts to get a little bit dicey. Whereas three foot seas in a 72 foot long party boat isn't the same thing. So each trip has a little bit different thresholds, but primarily our overall blanket company policy, anything over four to six foot or 20 knot winds, we generally cancel. Um, and we play with that a little bit on our 39 and 44 hour trips because it's a large boat filled with advanced anglers. Uh, on our half day trips, we would never go out fishing if it was close to four to six foot seas. So it kind of depends on the trip. But when we do have to cut a trip short, whether it's a mechanical issue, a weather issue, whatever it is, we do our best to go out of our way. Again, we guarantee an excellent client experience with superior guest service. That's my personal guarantee. And we will do whatever we have to do to try to make sure that everybody leaves as happy as possible. And that's what we always strive for and shoot for. We've been in business nearly a hundred years. We're family owned and operated and family oriented. And we try to treat our staff, captains, crew, and especially you guys as family too when you're visiting us. So we're not in it to steal your money. If we cut a trip short, we're going we're gonna to work something out to make sure you leave happy. Uh, but good question. Let's see. Next question is, uh, glad you're back fishing. I'm glad I'm back fishing too. Amen to that. What bait did they use to catch that 50 pound Kibera snapper on that 39 hour trip? To be honest with you, I don't know specifically offhand what bait they used to catch that 39 or that Kibera on the 39 hour trip. I know if you're going out to target Kibera, the um, the magical bait, the best bait for Cabrera snapper is lobster. Lobster is actually Florida spiny lobster is the best bait. You can't use those as bait though legally. Uh, most of the time, a lot of people will bring out those cold water main lobsters. I've seen people spend a bunch of money on the that lobster machine in front of our office to catch some of those lobsters to take out for bait. I've used lobster for bait. Ended up reeling them up and cooking them uh, on the grill for dinner because. Uh, it didn't work out. I generally, the Kubera snapper that I've seen caught, the Kubera snapper that I've caught, I've always caught them while mangrove snapper fishing using light tackle, a mangrove snapper fishing with a chunk of thread fin. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll be fishing and you'll hook a mangrove snapper and start reeling that fish in and that Kibera snapper will come up and eat that mangrove snapper. That's generally nine out of ten times how we catch those big mangrove or big Kuberas. Uh, the biggest Kibera that was caught to date on our boats here at Hubbard's Marina was a hundred and 11 pound mangrove snapper or 111 pound uh, Kubera snapper and that's actually how it was caught uh, was on a uh, mangrove snapper setup he was mangrove snapper fishing and uh, 
essentially just accidentally hooked into this monster uh, Kubera snapper. My cousin Sam, uh, him and his friends went out on a 39-hour fishing trip, and they caught a 92-pound Kubera snapper, and they caught it on 40-pound test leader fishing for mangrove snapper. But here is that 111-pounder. That was a monster fish. That fish is bigger than Richie Golas is. <laughs> it's almost as big as Garrett is. That is a monster fish. We got a uh, a bunch of photos of it. Well, I'm going the wrong way. There's another one. There's a picture of me holding it. It's almost as big as I was. It's a monster fish for sure. Beautiful catch. That was the boat record for Cabrera snapper here at Hubbard's Marina. And that was caught mangrove snapper fishing. This 50 pound Cabrera that was caught recently, don't exactly know what it was caught on, but I would put money on the fact he was mangrove snapper fishing when he caught it. Or he was using a big frisky live bait. Uh, amberjack fishing and caught it I don't know let's see here uh, so on full moon trips do you recommend heavier weights due to stronger currents generally if you're going fishing on a 39 hour trip or 44 hour trip or 12 hour extreme trip around a full moon or around a new moon it's always a good idea when you're offshore fishing around a full moon or new moon to bring heavier weights so generally we primarily fish with four six and eight ounce leads but if I'm going out on a full moon trip or a new moon trip, it's a good idea to have 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and maybe even a 16 ounce weight. Now, generally, you bring more 4 and 6 ounce weights. Mostly 6 ounce weights is what we use. But it's always a good idea to have at least one or two 10 and 12s and at least one 16 ounce in your tackle box. In, current, in case that current is running really strong, you have some heavier options. So to answer your question, if you're going fishing on a 39 hour on a full moon or a new moon, yes, it would be a good idea to bring some heavier weight. Just, just in case you never know what you're going to run into out there. Uh, when you speak of two-speed reels, what do you consider the optimum gear ratio for both speeds? So there's really no optimal gear ratio. High gear ratio reels, in my opinion, is like 5 to 1 or better. So 5 to 1, 5.2 to 1, 5.5 to 1, or 6.1 to 1, or whatever it might be, uh, is high gear ratio. So to me, I really like those Daiwa Saltiga reels. I think it's like 6.2 to 1 for high gear, and low gear is like 3.2 to 1. That's what I really like. That reel works really well for me. Um, but as long as you're in that range, so low gear ratio is like 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Medium gear ratio is like 4 to 1, 5 to 1. High gear ratio is anything above middle of 5 and up. Um, really, once you get over 6.2 to 1, it's just too much. <laughs> There's no, like the Daiwa hyperspeed reels, that's crazy. Great for light snapper mangro or light tackle mangrove snapper fishing, but that's about it. Because remember, the higher the gear ratio, the lower the power you have. But the lower the gear ratio, the higher the power you have. It's just like your truck. If you're in low gear, you have more torque, more power. If you're in high gear, you can go at higher rates of speed, but you don't have any torque or power. It's the same thing in your reel. A low gear ratio reel is going to give you more torquing power to get that gag grouper or amberjack up off the bottom. Whereas a high speed reel is going to give you more high speed to get that fish hooked quickly and up to the boat quickly. So high speed reels work really well for snapper fishing. Low speed reels work really well for grouper or amberjack fishing. And that's what's so cool about a two speed reel is it's basically both reels in one. That's why I really like that Daiwa Saltiga. And that's why it's worth the extra money. <clears throat> I always hear about you guys catching stuff while trolling. Uh, what do you use to troll with? Uh, now, that that's somewhat true. We do catch a lot of fish while trolling, but we don't always. Uh, this last 44-hour full moon trip caught a lot trolling because it's a 44-hour full moon. The 44-hour leaves at 10 a.m., and we start fishing at like 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Whereas a 39-hour trip leaves at 3 p.m., we start fishing at like midnight, 1 a.m. So the 39-hour doesn't have a lot of running time during the day. They only have about maybe four to, or excuse me, uh, yeah, four to six, seven hours of daylight. You primarily just troll during daylight hours. So the 39-hour doesn't have as much trolling time. A 44-hour, they troll 
from 10 a.m. A lot of guys will troll all the way up until bottom fishing. So they'll troll a really long time, which gives you more opportunities to catch fish while trolling. Um, but to troll, you need really big reels, like at least a 50 wide or 80 wide two speed reel with a lot of uh, low gear drag power because you got to crank in those fish while the boat's moving. If you hook a kingfish, a bonita, a, a mackerel, you got to reel that fish in while the boat's moving. If you got a big 50 pound wahoo peeling your line out of your reel, we might. We'll slow down for that, but primarily you're retrieving those fish while the boat's moving. So it definitely takes a really big special trolling rod and reel. We do have that stuff in the shop for you if you want to purchase it. We do have plenty of trolling lures. What works well for us trolling, we carry it in our shop. So you can come in the shop before your trip and we'll get you set up. I think it is time to give away another free trip though. So we're going to give away a free 10 hour all day for two guests, 10 hour all day for two guests right now. Let's see who won that 10 hour all day for two guests. Let's see. Let's see. Drum roll, please. And the winner is John Rose from Fort Myers. Remember, if you're picked as that lucky winner, you do have to text that number in the upper right-hand corner <laughs> of the screen. Text that number with your full home address, and that is how you uh, claim your free trip certificate. We'll mail it out to you. But you got to text that number quickly to prove that you are watching live. So congrats, John Rose, for winning that 10-hour all day for two guests. Let's see here. What other questions? Do you have masks for sale yet? Yes, we do have masks and we do have hand sanitizer both for sale in our office behind the counter. Right now we just have a black mask and then it's a black mask with gray trim and we have plenty of hand sanitizer in the office for sale too. We have hand sanitizer out on the counter and we try to put as much as we can on the boats but unfortunately hand sanitizer is really hard to find in bulk product right now so we have small bottles of hand sanitizer for sale in the office if you want to grab a bottle to bring out in the boat or go to your job or whatever it is um, but our big bottles of hand sanitizer we only got a few of those so we get those on the office counter for you to use when you come in to check in um, and then on the boats we're primarily using buckets with water and a little bit of bleach changing those out constantly to make sure that we have a good sanitizer solution on the boats but yes, to answer your question, we do have masks for sale in our office. And our custom Hubbard's Marina fishing buffs are coming soon from Salinity Gear. So we're waiting on those. We're super excited to get those into our shop here soon. But unfortunately, everybody and their brother is also ordering fishing buffs. So it's taken Salinity a little while to get them to us. But as soon as we have them, we'll definitely make some announcements. Uh, let's see here. Is it in, is it your opinion to still necessary to have restrictions on the inshore slam? So the inshore slam he's talking about, or she's talking about is a trout, redfish and snook trout, redfish and snook are all catch and release only through end of May, 2021. So end of May, 2021 is when they might open trout, redfish and snook in our area. Um, in my opinion, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> I'm all we do at Hubbard's Marina. We focus mainly on near shore and offshore fishing. If you want to do an inshore private charter, I'll get you set up with my friend, Cap Mike Anderson from the real animals and one of his guys, they'll take you out fishing. They even have people that can pick you up near Hubbard's Marina and take you inshore fishing, but we don't do inshore fishing on our boats we can book them for you we can do an inshore trip for you but it's not through directly through our boat so i don't get involved inshore related and a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions about fishing regulations so if i'm going to get involved in those strong opinions and those fishing regulations fights i'm going to stay focused on grouper snapper amberjack and whatever else is offshore uh, so I'm going to leave my opinion off the table about snook, redfish, and trout. But I will say that red tide killed a lot of those snook, redfish, and trout. That's the reason the FWC and a lot of people advocated for that closure. And I will say there's a lot of snook hanging around the pass that I didn't used to see three years ago. So the numbers have definitely come back. Now, what you do with that 
is whatever you want. What you think is your opinion, uh, but I will not share mine. <laughs> Let's see here. Next question is, what happened Tuesday with the boat coming home early? So Tuesday was one of those days that I could count on my two hands where we did have a uh, five-hour trip come in early, had a problem with one of the engines. Uh, it was overheating. Luckily, we were able to shut it down. We didn't have any issues. We didn't lose power. We didn't lose anything. Um, but we had to come in. We had to terminate the trip. And we got all those people back out, comped them on it the next day, or uh, refunded them, or gave them gift certificates. We worked with everybody to make sure they left happy. And a lot of them came back the next day and caught plenty of fish. So it was just an unfortunate thing that occurred. Uh, it really was a product of the boats being down. Uh, we were closed since March 23rd through May 4th. We were closed a very long time. And a lot of the guys, Dusty, Captain Joe, Captain Brian, uh, Pete, Mikey, John, a ton of our crew was down at the dock every day running these boats. The Florida uh, fishermen had 70, something like 72 hours of running time during our closure. That's how often they were running the boats, trying to keep them healthy. We even ran the boat a lot, uh, like two days prior to opening. We took it out, did an hour or two cruising, brought the motors up to temperature because we didn't want to open up and have something break because it hasn't been used. And that's exactly essentially what happened. Had a, a part give um, and we think it was just simply from not being used. But luckily it was an easy fix, got it back up and running and it ran a 39 hour fishing trip. So <sighs> problems, boats, it does happen. Occasionally, rarely we do have those mechanical issues that come up, but luckily we have a great team and it's a rare occurrence. But weather, mechanical issues, uh, unforeseen circumstances, acts of God like COVID-19, hurricanes, uh, things do occur that do affect our fishing trips. And we got to kind of roll with the punches. And luckily, uh, we're pretty flexible. I'm not, but <laughs> our team is. <laughs> Let's see, what other questions do we have? What is the weather looking like for the Tuesday 10-hour trip? Thanks for bringing up the weather, because I was supposed to talk about that earlier, and I forgot. So, We'll cover the weather here real quickly. We are running out of time uh, as I'm pulling that up. Keep in mind, guys, if I didn't get to your question live during the show, I'll do my best to answer your question later on because uh, after the show ends, I try to go through as many of the comments as I can. If you commented on YouTube, your comments just simply disappear. It's super lame. If you commented on Facebook, I try to get through like at least... 600 700 of them but there's 1500 comments so i don't get through all of them if you text us at that number in the upper right hand corner i guarantee you i will read your question and i will respond if not tonight sometime tomorrow somebody will respond you can always text us at that number in the upper right hand corner text us anytime we'll always respond to that number so that's the best way to reach us and stay in contact with us is by texting us at our office number and when we're open you can call us at that number too uh, but let's see here the weather so go to our website hubbardsmarina.com under fishing trips you can scroll down to the weather links page the weather links page is going to bring up all the special weather links that I use to check the weather for our trip. And the 10 hour trip, I like looking at the wind finder forecast. And you can see here real easily that these blue uh, columns, that's a good sign. The blue is nice. Light blue starts getting windy. Green is bad. Yellow is really bad. Red is hurricane. So you can see we've got a lot of green this week. We got a lot of wind coming in. Uh, got a high pressure, low pressure ridge. We got a lot of action coming up this week. Tuesday right now is looking doable. It's about two and a half foot seas, but it's going to be windy. It's going to be 15 to 20, if not fully 20 knot winds out of the east uh, predominantly. It's like the pressure ridge is that day. It's mostly high pressure. So uh, the weather for Tuesday's 10 hour trip is looking a little bumpy, but it's doable. It's going to be a little windy, but it's doable. So right now we're planning on going Tuesday on the 10 hour trip. Tomorrow morning, we got a five hour half day trip that's going out. It's got some nice weather for that. 
Tuesday looks decent for the half day and all day trip. Wednesday's looking bumpy for the half day trip, but we might be able to pull it off. Thursday's looking really windy. I don't think Thursday's all day or half day can go unless that weather drops down. Keep in mind, a lot of times the weather changes drastically uh, as those days come up. So we don't like canceling trips ahead of time. We like waiting until the day before, two days before. If it's a 39-hour trip, we try to give people more notice because they're traveling from further distances. If it's a five-hour trip, 10-hour trip, a lot of times we'll wait to the day before or morning before uh, to cancel the trip because we hate to try to, or we hate canceling trips. There's nothing worse than letting you guys down let my crew and my captains down and not getting to do what we love. So we hate to cancel trips, but ultimately your safety and your uh, uh, ability to have fun and catch fish is primarily important. So if the weather is at all uh, unsafe, we cancel. If the weather is very, very uncomfortable and the chance of having a good time is extremely low, we cancel. So there's a lot of different things that come into play. But basically this week, starting tomorrow afternoon, uh, Tuesday afternoon, and all of Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday looks very windy. Uh, offshore, it looks nice. It comes, it starts getting nice Friday afternoon. So the May 15th, 39 hour trip's not in trouble. Um, but the Tuesday, 10 hours, Looking okay right now, but a little bumpy. Thursday's 10 hour, not so good. And that's the answer to the weather. But use that weather links page on our website. Check out the weather. Stay tuned with it. If you have questions, you can text us or you can chat with us right through our website. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to stay tuned and stay connected with us. Let's see here. Uh, when do you think it will be okay to come down from out of state? That's another good question. I mean, ultimately, that comes down to all the different um, state, federal, and county regulations. And uh, I know right now it's kind of frowned upon to be doing leisure travel, but there's a lot of people coming in town from out of state right now. So uh, legally, I think you are more than welcome to travel into our state from out of town. Um so I'll, I'll leave my opinion out of that one. <laughs> um, but I mean, if it was me and I was living out of state, I'd probably wait another week or two just to see, make sure things keep declining before I start traveling again. But we'd love to see you. If you do make it down here, if you want to come down here, we'd love to have you. We're not turning anybody around right now, but we will turn you around if you're sick or if you're in that vulnerable category, again, make sure you read our policies and procedures and adhere to them if you're coming to visit us. Let's see here, what other questions do we have? Uh, I'll be going out on the 39 hour trip on July 7th. What can I expect to catch? Well, 39 hour trip in July, that's still red snapper season. So that's what we're gonna be targeting. Uh, but there's a ton of fish to catch on a 39 hour trip mangrove snapper, lane snapper, vermilion snapper, yellowtail snapper, red snapper, red grouper, gag grouper, scamp grouper. Uh, you might see a ton of other pelagic species, almaco jacks, porgies, red porgies, knobbed head porgies. The list goes on and on and on. You never know what you're going to catch. That's the beauty of offshore fishing. Uh, but primarily in July, June, July, and the very first day of August, we'll be targeting red snapper. Let's see what other questions. Is it amberjack season right now? Yes, amberjack are open May, August, September, and October. So May is open all month. We just added a brand new 39-hour trip, May 29th. Book it up. What do you usually troll with as far as baits and lures? One of my favorite offshore trolling baits is the Rapala x rap Magnum. Uh, the trolling skirts work well. We've got all the lures and baits in our office coming down to the shop uh, before your trip, we'll get you set up with our favorite trolling lures that are working best right now. Best way to do it. Come down and see us and uh, get the tackle in our shop. Can we pack our own lunch on a five-hour trip? Yes, you can pack your own lunch and food on any trip. You can bring your own food on any of our trips. You're welcome to bring your own food, your drink, your own live bait. You can bring your own tackle. Uh, you can do whatever you want. 
the only thing you can't bring on the boats. We don't allow any guns, no drugs, no glass, no alcohol, and no bananas. We do allow alcohol on our five-hour trophy shark trip and our 12-hour extreme trip because those both happen on our charter boats without uh, alcohol licenses. So if you book a private charter on a private charter boat that doesn't have an alcohol license, you can bring alcohol. But the big party boats, they have alcohol licenses. We can't allow alcohol. And then on any trip, 10 hours or longer, we don't allow smartphones or smart watches because of GPS devices. So no uh, electronic devices with GPS uh, devices on 10 hour trips or longer. So that's what you can't bring. Everything else, welcome to bring it. <laughs> now we have a lot of questions that I'm unfortunately not going to get to live during the show. But again, if I don't get to your question and you texted us at this number in the upper right hand corner, I'll make sure to get to it sometime tonight. I might not respond back to you because I do have to eventually go to sleep. Got to be up early, but, uh, I will uh, get to your question tonight or early tomorrow. And uh, if you text me back, I'll do my best to answer again as quick as I can. So I hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. We had a ton of viewers. We still got to give away that free 39-hour trip. I didn't forget. Don't worry. We are still sitting at about 480 live viewers. So I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the show. We're going to keep doing it every Sunday night right here, 8.30 p.m. on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube. If you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends, and please join us again next week. Same time, same bad channel, right on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube at 8.30. Uh, covered all my announcements earlier. Come by and see us for some of that new Hubbard's Marina gear. We got the masks, the sanitizer. We got our new D-hookers in the shop. Red snapper season's coming up. Amberjack season's open right now. So hopefully you'll get a chance to come out and see us and uh, go fishing or dolphin cruising or on an island trip or uh, rent a kayak or paddleboard. We do a ton of different things here at Hubbard's Marine. We got a free beer and wine sunset cruise. That's, that's an awesome time. Um, but let's see who won a 39-hour fishing trip. 39 hour fishing trip for one guest coming at you now remember if you're picked as that lucky winner you do have to text us at that phone number in the upper right hand corner and uh, send us your home address so we can pick you or uh, send you out that free certificate all right lucky winner of the 39 hour fishing trip for one guest is drum roll please sharif from Michigan, you are the lucky winner. So make sure you shoot us a text, Sharif, to claim your free trip uh, and uh, send us your home address. That's the trick. That's what we need. And uh, thank you all for watching tonight. We'll see you next week, 8.30 p.m. on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Snapchat, simply search Hubbard's Marina. Shoot us a text sometime. Come by and see us in the shop. Come join us on a fishing trip, dolphin tour, island trip, sunset cruise, or rent a kayak and paddle board. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Have a great night, guys. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day again. And uh, have a great week. Thanks for watching.